got to look over there, okay. I think, to see the thing, rather than look at yourself, because you look at yourself, all right? Yeah. No, not over there, there. Oh. Right, if you talk or anything, look there. Okay. Okay. Hello, my name's Anita, and welcome to Gaga Knits, where I talk about not only my knitting, but crochet, sewing, and any other crafty or creative things I might be doing this month. This video is all about what I've been doing in April. This is just a short intro. I've made a few little films already because I have a little helper here today. And this is Harry, my eldest grandson, who's been a bit poorly, haven't you? Yeah. So I had to race up the motorway yesterday, yesterday and rescue him so that he could come and stay here. And he's looking very pale, but we're looking after him well. And he wanted to pop on to say hello, didn't you? Yeah. Can you say hello? Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Usually he's very chatty, but he's a bit quiet today. So you can be my little assistant and hold things up for me. Okay. So we've got a little bit of knitting, crochet, and um, I put a video in of my trip to Wonderwall. And a friend has given me a gift that Harry can't stop fiddling with because I said he can't look in it until I talk about it. So first of all, we'll go on to knitting. And I have been making a basket wee blanket for my daughter's friend, your Auntie Jade. She asked me to make a blue baby blanket and I've been working away on it. It's getting quite big. It's going to be a girl. Well, that's the thing I was going to say. The only problem is, first scan, she believed she was having a boy, so she wanted blue. Second scan, girl. girl. So, um, and she's already got a pink blanket and lots of pink things from her little girl already. So I will knit this up and keep it in my basket of baby oh, things. Next scan, it might be a boy, so. No, it doesn't work like that. <laughs> but mummy's friends are always having babies, aren't they? You wanted it to be a boy. Mm. But we've been having lots of baby boys, haven't we? Friends and family. So that was the first one. There's two girls in the, like two cousins of mine that are girls. That's oh. Ellie and then Daddy's part of the family. I have more cousins that are girls. Oh, well. We only have Morgan, Lucas, Kian and Callum, all boys. All boys. Uh, come back in. <laughs> That's it, because you're, you're disappearing over there. Okay, can I do this not, now? Not yet. Oh. I've not had an assistant before. This is proving more hard work than I thought. So, um, that was my only knitting project. I did, last time I showed you my poppy jumper that I was making from a Susan Crawford pattern and I had done the front with the colour work and I was working on the back and I forgot to do the twisted rib on the ribbing at the bottom. So I had to undo it and do it again. This time I did the proper twisted rib and then went to change the larger needles to carry on with the body section and realised I'd done the twisted rib on the larger needles. So that's had to come undone again. It's gone back in the naughty corner. My projects have a it's naughty corner. Uh, like I little boys who don't miss them. It won't be long now, yeah, don't do that. I don't and crochet I've been working on Harry's Charizard and there's another problem no, there, no, isn't it's there? Charizard. Charizard. Not Charizard. And, and what did you tell me the other Charizard. week? That you've gone off Pokemon and you like something else now. I like Pikmin now. You like Pikmin now and I'm making... Oh, but they're both made by Nintendo and they both end and start with the same letters. Right, but so you will be happy with him, although he's not a Pikmin. Pikmin, having shown me yesterday, would be very easy to make. Because what does a Pikmin look like? You can tell. Look up there and see. A radish. A radish with legs. Yeah. And he's got a little um, leaf thing on the top. It's quite cute, isn't it? I could make one of those if I can find you a pattern. You can, and there's only three colours, isn't there? Red, blue and yellow. So. No, no. Oh, red, and the, and the red, boss man. Yeah, all them are. So. Um, uh, no, there's red, blue. Yeah. Yellow. Red, yellow, purple, white. Oh, is there? Pink, the wings and Ooh. big eyes. Oh. White, but which are poison, and with red eyes. Um, ice, and it'll be light blue. Well, you only showed me three. Orange, then. green. Okay, so there might be a few. <laughs> so that could, could keep me busy, but they're much easier to make, I think, if we if we found a pattern for those. And then... Oh, um, grey, because rock pick them. Okay. So well, well, actually more than he said. Once he gets started on computer games and things, you can't stop him, can you? 
Especially Fortnite. Yeah. Well, uh, anyway, stop opening ah, the box. Come on, come on, come on. I want to see I it. can't move it away because the table is covered in Lego at the moment. That's because it's Jack. Jack's not even here. Oh. Right, so oh. on to sewing. Um, I finished my bucket hat for my friend in work, so I did a little video of that because I've already taken it in to her. Um, so I'll put that in here. Oop. Hello, sorry if you're shaking a little bit. You're sort of propped up on my table on a tin and things. Um, but I wanted to pop on quickly and show you the bucket hat before I take it into work. So my friend in work asked me if I'd be able to make her a bucket hat using a pair of shorts. Um, she was selected and played for Wales rugby for the women and um, she wanted me to make the shorts into a bucket hat. So I said I'd give it a go. So I looked for a pattern and I found um, a free pattern on uh, spoon flower fabrics. Um, you could download it with just three pieces and I made a little mock-up of the hat and took it in for her to try on so she was happy with that and um, so then she gave me the shorts and she asked there's a patch on the front and it's got a red background so she asked could the lining be in red and then there's gold piping around um, the outside of the patch so could the uh, top stitching be in gold so I said that's not a problem I can do that um, so I ordered some cotton drill and some Gutterman's top stitching thread from Love Knitting and Sewing and then that came and then I started on the short uh, on not on the shorts on the hat so first of all I had to sort of cut the shorts apart to lay the pattern pieces down but she wanted to keep obviously the patch and there's some other embroidery on there and the um the sort of top stitch pipe um sort of curved seams and as much of that as I could she wanted to keep so it's a little bit awkward to cut out but I did manage it so here is the hat so I'm pretty pleased with it um, the brim is a little bit wonky but it was very awkward to cut out um, accurately because of the curves of the shorts and things and there's the patch so she wanted the red there as the lining and the gold piping as the top stitching um, I'll take it off and show you so the, the inside is the cotton drill and because the cotton drill is quite a thick cotton I didn't need to line it or put any interfacing or anything on it and she did she wants it quite floppy she said so you had to cut two middle pieces out and sew them together to make a hoop and then you top stitch either side of the seam and then you add the top section um, you have to ease it in but it's quite simple it's not a complete circle it's sort of an oval and then you top stitch either side of that seam and then you've got two brim pieces and you do the same there you sew them together to make a loop and then um, you sew them to the base of the hat and you top stitch either side of the seam and you also top stitch that part um, and then you just do rounds and rounds of top stitching until you get to the end. Now the spoon flower version they um, left it frayed but I didn't like that in the shorts fabric so I've just turned it over slightly and did a little hem on both the shorts and on the drill fabric and then I've glued the very brim the very edge of the brim together because it was a bit wonky and I didn't like seeing them separate so the only thing that holds the two together are these rows of stitching so it's quite nice I had hoped I used red in my bobbin so I had hoped you wouldn't see any stitches but it's pulled the top stitching thread through so I think that's probably a tension issue on my sewing machine and it was quite thick to go through these fabrics and some of the seam lines and things but hopefully she'll be happy with it and um, I have sent her a photo of it she's quite excited to receive it and she's promised that I can put a picture of her in wearing it so they'll probably be her with a big beaming smile at the end of this bit
And the other thing I've been working on was stop jigging. Oh. Sit nicely. Sit nicely. Stop oh, okay. it. Look, look up so they can see your nice eyes. No, I don't want to. God, this is hard work. So anyway, I've made the Gathered Sundress by Runway Patterns uh, or Peppermint Magazine. It's a free pattern. I graded out from a 38 at the bust to a 42 at the waist and it was huge. Uh, and it didn't, it wasn't flattering at all. So I took it all apart again, even the unlock, overlocking and everything like that, took it all apart and re-sewed it as a straight 38. I had a little bit of problem with the lining because it had frayed quite a bit. Um, I was hoping to finish it yesterday on my day off, but because of Paulie Person, who is obviously much perkier today, um, I didn't get any of that done, so I shall hopefully show that to you finished next time. I didn't miss school for two days because I wanted to miss school today. Mm, didn't want to. I you did. do go to school all the time. You're very good. Um, I don't so want to miss this school, so I should have a day off school all right. Now and then when you're poorly. Yeah. If you say you're poorly, we know you're ill because you don't usually miss school. So that was the sewing. And then this weekend just gone on the Sunday, I went to Wonderwall with my friend Paula. And I did a video when I came back because I was it was such a nice day. So I'm going to put that in here. I have had the loveliest day. Um, oh, just a lovely day. So... Um, I've been to Wonderwall with my friend Paula and here is the program. I'll need that because I need to look up the shops I bought things in because although I asked for cards, uh, business cards, and most people don't do that anymore. They just have like a little sort of um, sign up say in their Facebook page, Instagram website and things because I do like to tell you where I got these things for. So we went on the Sunday and uh, I picked her, her up about 10 past eight and we got there at quarter to 10. It's a lovely drive from where we live. We go all through Brecon and um, past the reservoirs and it's just stunning uh, scenery. And we were very lucky with the weather. It stayed dry and quite sunny all the drive down. It did pour down when we were in the halls and uh, tin roofs it was quite noisy but we were very lucky and we just had a little bit of rain on the way home that was fine so we it opens at 10 uh, uh, so we got there and um, we, you have to walk from the car park up to where you um, queue up to get in that's fine and we queued up we went in and it was just wonderful so there's three big halls the halls one and two are all in one big sort of barn and then the third one is just off separately and that's where they do the sheep walk which is the fashion show and um, we wandered around some of the stalls and bought some things and we had arranged at one o'clock to meet up with Anne from Sparnits or No Excuses podcast well she had arranged that she would be at the dining area one of the dining area sections at one o'clock uh, if anyone wanted to come along and I said well I'll meet you there so we were making our way over to her we bumped into Welsh Sal hi Sal and she was sitting in the wrong place but we all got organized and we met up with the lovely Anne and her friend Penny and I also met a new lady called Pip who'd come along to see Anne I believe and then the lovely Helen from Mousy Makes I've been telling her about Wonderwall and she persuaded her husband to come all the way from Durham in their camper van to stay in the Brecon area and so that she could go to uh, Wonderwall on the Sunday and he went for a walk up Penavan so she could spend all day wandering around all the lovely stalls. Oh it was just it was just lovely we had such a nice day and it was nice to meet up with everyone. Um, I had wanted to get, the only two things I really wanted to get was a four millimeter crochet hook, an ergonomic one, nice thick chunky handle and a punch needle kit just because I wanted to have a go at it and I thought it's better to have a kit because you'd have everything in it but unfortunately I didn't get either of those things but I did buy a couple of things. So the first thing I bought was a beautiful skein of yarn and this was from Elliot Tith and Bryn. 
and this is the Tithen Brin Rustic and Alpaca Sock and it does feel rustic, it feels um, a little bit rough but I have had her yarn before and when you knit it up and wash and block it and wear it, it's, although it feels rough it isn't, well it doesn't, it's not rough against my skin, it doesn't irritate me at all and I love these this colourway and it's called Bright Magic and uh, the reason I bought it one, I like to support Ellie because she's lovely, but also because she had um, a, sh a sample shawl hanging up and um, the shawl was designed by the lady who made the hitchhiker shawl and um, I'll put a name of the shawl underneath here because um, I can't remember it <laughs> and it was just beautiful, her sample, so she'd had just the natural yarn as the backdrop and then the sort of eyelet rose and the little uh, sort of petally bits on the edge um, was made from a silic similar colour to this and I just fell in love with it, thought it was beautiful. But now I'm thinking maybe I shouldn't make that one, I should make one something similar because uh, I can take her along and show her next year then and she's already got that one as a sample hasn't she? So, But I might make it or I might make something similar. I like the effect of plain colours and then um, a sort of variegated stripe. I just, it just, I really like the look of that so um, I shall have a think. I'll either make that shawl or another one in this in this colourway so that's beautiful. And Ellie, uh, she used to have a podcast several years ago and she, her and her husband used to live on the outskirts of Cardiff I believe and they had a little son and they sold up and they moved to West Wales and bought a small holding. They needed a lot of work. I think the house needed work and then they had a lot of land, but it was undeveloped. They've uh, just done years and years of work being, building polytunnels and um, uh, raised beds and things to grow um, vegetables and they've uh, introduced animals. And in that time she had another little boy in amongst all of this work and she has built up a small flock of sheep and all her yarn is from her own her own sheep Now they don't sell any of them um, to go to slaughter or anything the, she keeps the male sheep as well as the female sheep and she brings on her lambs and the she um, so they shear all the sheep they send the fleeces to the mill get processed, give them back to them and then she dyes them herself. So I, it's it's lovely. She's got all the names of her sheep. She'll know who whose this is um, and she's such a lovely lady and she always has a stall in Wonderwall and her mum comes along to help her and they're both so nice and it's just like meeting up with old, old friends. Every year um, I go to see her and it's lovely. So I like to support her. So I got that from her and then also this we're in my bedroom at the moment because it's very dark so you're by the window so I thought a bit of natural light but I wanted to tell you while I was still all excited about my day and hopefully when my son moves out people close to me know this when my son moves out this is going to be my craft room and um, I'm going to have white walls and my favorite color is this this sort of green uh, color I'm going to keep these curtains I like these uh, William Morris Strawberry Thief, white walls and I'm going to have some nice, all nice crafty things. I've got my um, cross, stick, cross stitch pictures to go on the wall and some crafty things and also I'm going to make one of these which was from a kit. It's a macrame bookshelf and um, this was quite expensive. It was £26. I did ask the lady, like I say, for a um, a business card but she didn't have one so I will find her in my program and hopefully rec recognize the shop and I'll put the details because she has got a website and she had lots of macrame things in her stall on her stall on display for plant pot holders and things which were really nice but I have seen these shelves before and I just like that effect I thought I could have that here in my craft room and um, it comes with everything you need. So you've got two skeins of the 
of the yarn or or special macrame rope I'm not quite sure but this look it looks does that look green to you it looks more gray to me but I think I think it's uh it's not a bad match and if you get that and you get there's my there's my pole done oh it's still in the back So you get the um, the block, a bit like a swing, and then the piece of wood to go on the top. And then you do the macrame from the pattern, and then you make yourself a hanging shelf. So I like that. It all came in a nice little plain bag. So I might use that bag then afterwards, might decorate it some stitching on or something and use it because that's, that's handy so you can use the whole thing so I like that that was wonderful and then there were two stalls that actually sold fabric and patterns which was really nice there was one the people who did Luna Lapin and they've got some patterns there and I bought my Somerset top pattern from them last year but they didn't have any fabric there but they had fabric this year not a huge amount, but I didn't buy any of that. And then there was this other store that I think I bought fabric from last year to make Harry a cushion and I still haven't made it. But they had some sewing patterns there for half price. And I've had my eye on this one for quite a while. And it's the Bella Tea Dress by Liberty Fabrics. And um, it, the full price was meant to be £18 and they were selling them off for £9. So... I had to have that one so I really like uh, the idea of of having that and they did have some Liberty fabrics there that were very reasonable but um, I didn't think I'd buy it there they it they had quite a few colorways but not a, an extensive range and I wanted to take my time and I have ordered quite a few fabrics over the last few months because I've been getting quite back into my sewing I've been watching um, a few sewing YouTube channels to give me inspiration and things and um, yeah so I wanted to take my time to choose the right fabrics but so I was pleased with that so that was the only thing three things I bought so it, like I said it was a lovely day we all met up for lunch I made some Welsh cakes to share around with everybody and we all had a good old natter and then went back off for a wander and then we watched the the um sheep walk so the fashion show at three and then we came home after that and the fashion show was delayed for a few minutes because of the government um alarm thing that went off did you experience that were you in the uk are you in the uk are you in the uk did you experience that so we were all waiting <laughs> for this huge alarm to go off or all the phones to go off shrilly and but um I think about three went and that was it so that was a little bit disappointing um but martin was at home and he said his phone was quite noisy so maybe maybe it was just the noise of the barn or perhaps the signal wasn't great there i don't know but anyway it was a bit of a damp squid if you tell if you ask me but still anyway we did that and we went we watched the show which was nice it was a bit smaller i think this year than usual but it was still enjoyable and then we headed home and it's all over for another year. What can we do now? Yay! And last but not least, acquisitions. Now I have bought some fabrics, but I will show you next time because I have a disruptive assistant who is dying to show you this thing that I have here. So a friend in work loves to go to a charity shop, all the charity shop shopping. And on Friday lunchtime, after lunch, she came up to me and she said, I've got you a gift. I saw this and I thought it was perfect for you. And this is it here. And it's a sewing box. Wait a minute. And I saw that's lovely. Thank you. And she said, oh, not only that, she said, open it and look inside. Right, now's your big moment. You can do it now. So you've got to do the flap. Not exciting for you, but look, full to the top it's got pins are all in there we've got webbing and um 
a sewing pencil. Do you want to take the things out? So we've got needles, buttons. Take Don't take those out. Take, no, come in the box. Me. Buttons. We've got a sewing kit. Thread. You've got to show them up to there, not just you. Threads. Pins. Yes, but just... No, I don't mean show everything, just as they come out. Okay, Harry, that's good. And that's darning threads. We've got loads of those. We've got more needles, more thread, more needles, and then a box full of threads. So we're not going to go through all the threads, although I think Harry would like to do that, wouldn't you? There's Gutterman threads in there. There's Silco threads and all sorts. You can um, see if you can fit them all back in. Drimmer threads. Drimmer, yeah, I don't know what Drimmer, Drimmer thread is. And that's so nice of her. Um, yeah, so that'll keep me going for a while, hey. won't it? Right, are you going now? Yeah, I'm going to go. We'll say goodbye on. then. Bye! <laughs> so, um, that's everything for this month. Sorry it's a bit all over the place and a bit scatty, but as you can see, I have my hands full at the moment. Uh, I hope you all have a nice month and I shall see you at the end of May. Bye!